Evening, peeps. Good evening, everyone. All right, before we um, see if there's any news, let's talk about the big fight this weekend. There's actually a few big fights this weekend. There's Quadras versus Jesse Rodriguez. Obviously, there's Furman versus Barrios. But the fight I'm talking about is going down at the Motor Point Arena in Cardiff, and that's Liam Williams versus Chris Eubank Jr. We are doing a live watch along for that fight. We haven't done a live watch along for quite a while. Um, and I think we might do the whole card. Honestly, I'm really intrigued by a lot of the fights on the card. Um, obviously, you've got Otto Volin versus uh, Sokolowski. I find that quite fun. Caroline Dubois makes a, her, her debut as a pro. Um, you've got Jenkins versus Indongo, which is very random. Uh, Clarissa Shields fight. So we might do the whole card. If we are, we are going to start about 8 o'clock, but I will put it um, in the community tab. But we are 100% going to do a live watch along of this fight because it is intriguing, it really is. I did a video the other day and I wish to take back what I said. Although it could happen, I did say that Chris Eubank Jr. would be the first person to stop Liam Williams. And I, I don't know if it's just because I've fallen for the Chris Eubank Jr. swag and confidence, bit of arrogance, and I feel like I've fallen for that again. And I've fallen for that for a long time. <laughs> It's got me for a long time, just because that all helps sell a fight, doesn't it? And Chris is super confident, and I'm watching him doing that gloves are off with Liam Williams. I'm thinking, Liam Williams is in deep here. Because Chris, again, has this way of getting you where you think, oh, you're going to see something special. What I did love, by the way, Chris Eubank Jr., you guys have probably seen it. If you haven't seen it, go and see it. I think those gloves are also fantastic. I think Johnny Nelson does such a good job of just that silence where he says something and he doesn't jump in and he kind of just lets the mood kind of just grow and grow. But anyway, uh, Liam Williams said something along, no, Chris says, there's nothing fake about me. <laughs> and Liam Williams says, your hair's fake and your beard's fake. <laughs> I couldn't stop laughing. But look, anyway, look back to it. Um, I feel like I've almost fallen under the Chris Eubank Jr. spell again. I then had to go and watch Chris Eubank Jr.'s last fight just to kind of see, okay, has there been any improvements under Roy Jones Jr.? By the way, he's been with Roy Jones for a long time. This will be his third fight under Roy. But in terms of the length of time he's been with Roy, it wasn't that long after the James DeGale fight, I don't think. So that's a long, long time. I think that's the case anyway. Um, no, sorry, apologies. It was after the Korobov fight, wasn't it? I think it was after that one. But he's been with Roy a long time. That's a couple of years now. I don't think I've seen much improvements. I don't. And, and look, I think... Roy, and I've said this on a video, um, I think it was because it was his birthday recently, I think, I think Roy is one of the greatest fighters of all time. That doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be one of the greatest trainers of all time. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm not convinced about that, that fit yet. I think it sounds good and it sounds Hollywood, but in terms of watching Chris, I'm still not convinced. I still feel like I'm seeing a Chris who's trying to model himself on Roy Jones Jr. He kind of does this pouring thing that Roy does, but Roy's got really fast hands so Roy could get away with it. And then you're seeing the Chris that still makes fundamental mistakes, especially when he's trying to close the distance. Like his feet seem to be all over the place. He still does those really big swings and misses. And against that guy, I think it was Ardijan that he fought, he got caught a couple of times. And look, I don't know anything about that guy in terms of any sort of pedigree. So I'm, I'm still, and this is Chris at 32 now, so what you see is what you get with Chris. I'm still not convinced that Chris has really grasped it, you know? Don't go wrong, look, he's as tough as old boots. We know that. I mean, when he puts his punches together, they do look quite good, especially when he fucking hits that machine. They look fantastic. Everything he does looks really good. But every time I've seen him in the ring, I almost want to see a complete performance, and we've not really had that yet. Um, against Korobov, who... Look, Korobov was a fantastic amateur. Go and do your research. One of the, one of the, one of the best amateurs. But Korobov as a pro maybe didn't really deliver. And that was a Korobov right at the end. Um, then he had that fight against Marcus Morrison, where I, I watch it back and I still feel there's a time when Chris could have got rid of Marcus Morrison, but then Chris seemed to want to get the rounds. I don't know. And then maybe when he wanted to kind of shut it down, he couldn't. And again, uh, last time out, look, he got the stoppage, but I, I wasn't impressed up until that point. I, I really wasn't. So then... You kind of ask, why is he the big favourite over a Liam Williams, who was in there against Demetrius Andrade? Yes, got put down, but showed a set of big to get back up again. And 
you know, I don't know if it was a weight problem for Demetrius Andre, but I think Liam Williams looked pre looked pretty decent in the championship rounds. Look, was always going to lose that fight, but looked pretty decent. You think of the work, the body of work he's done before that. Um, he's had a really couple of tough fights with Liam Smith. I was actually thinking, would this be Chris's biggest win? Let me go into Chris Eubank Jr.'s box rec, because I don't want to say things that are a bit outlandish. But in terms of a live opponent, James DeGale was done, Korobov was also towards the end. In terms of a live opponent that still has something to offer, someone that last time out fought for a world title and went all the way with Demetrius Andrade, could this be his biggest win? Um, okay, the one that stands out really, but then again, what was a 2017 Arthur Abraham? I don't know. Yielded him, that win doesn't really look great at all, if I'm honest with you. I mean, fucking hell, we've seen Yielded him recently and he's not looked good. I thought Spike in 2015 was really good. But in terms of a proper, um, I don't know if people will have Liam Williams at world level, but again, he just fought for a world title. In terms of a proper live opponent that's still fresh, still young, still got something to offer, it's a big win. This would be a big win. Now, the, the reason I, I said I, I want to kind of take back what I said about Chris stopping him is because I, I look at Liam Williams and honestly, I, you, you watch Liam Williams' last three, four fights. It, although he can brawl and he likes to get involved in that, he can definitely, like, he can definitely box. Like there's, there's a boxer there in Liam Williams, but we also know that he's happy to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and have a, have a swing. He'll do that. You look at his 23 wins, 18 by knockout, so he's got the power as well. He's got power. He can box. What I don't like is the chopping and changing of trainers. I'm not too sure how that works. You think of his last six fights, I think he's had three different trainers now, obviously with Adam Booth. But you know Adam Booth will get him mentally correct. That's one thing we know about Adam Booth, the Dark Lord. He'll get him mentally uh, correct. Um, and I think he'll, he'll have a real good game plan. A real good game plan. And one could argue, it's not. in fact, you can't even argue, Adam Booth, in terms of his CV, is a better trainer than Roy Jones Jr. So you could argue he's got the better trainer, he's got home advantage, uh, not that I think that will scare Chris or, 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 or change Chris's tactics in any way, shape or form. Um, he's coming off for a loss, but at a higher opposition to what anything Chris has fought recently. I don't think it will be as easy as people think it will be. Or at least even as I thought it would be. I don't think so. Again, Chris is so erratic. What Chris does have here is quite a big size advantage. I, I know this is both at 160, but obviously Chris has campaigned at 168. And Liam Williams has campaigned at 154. So one's coming down, one's going up. So Chris is a lot bigger. Um, but I think Liam Williams will cause him problems. I, I really do. I think Liam Williams um, will outbox him at times. But then Chris... I... I I think it's going to I think it's going to have to be a Chris that reverts to type. If Chris fights the way he's been fighting recently, could be an upset, you know. And it will be an upset. But I do think Chris will revert to type and I think Chris will gut check this one out and I do think it's either a very late stoppage or Chris Chris sorry uh, wins this 8 rounds to 4, maybe even closer 9 rounds to 3. Um, I think people are sleeping on Liam Williams a little bit here. I really do. Uh, again, you take away the Demetrius Andrade performance before that. I thought Chris looked good against, and people might laugh about this book and say, oh, they're not that good. But Andrew Robinson, Alantes Fox, look good against those guys. And as much as people might laugh, again, go and look at who Chris has been fighting recently. There are no killers in there. There are no world level beaters in there either. And um, it would have been good to see how that Korobov fight was going to play out until Korobov got injured. It would have been very, very good. But look, I hope it's a good fight. Um, again, we are going to do live watch on people, so please make sure you tune into that one. I'm going for Chris to win it, but with no confidence. With no confidence, because, again, the things that help sell Chris is Chris's mouth, not what anything in terms of who he's beat, what Chris has done in the ring. I'm still waiting for those world-level opponents Chris and his dad at the time promised us many, many years ago. Because, again, the, the, unfortunately, the world-level opponents he's fought um, he's lost. He's lost to. Nothing wrong with the George Gross, Gross performance. Chris shouldn't have been fighting at 168 and Billy Joe was a, was a long, long time ago and that was a British level fight at the time. But if he does get past this and it's a big if for me, let, let's see the names. Let's see the names because it's funny how people, I think Matthew Macklin was like, oh, I think Chris would 
at this stage of his career beat Gennady Golovkin. I'm like, I need to see that. I need to see that because, again, what are we, go what are we basing this off? We can't be basing off any particular performances because he's not looked that great and whoever he's fought against ain't that great. This is a guy, again, people might say he wanted the rounds, couldn't get rid of Marcus Morrison. No disrespect to Marcus Morrison, but, you know, we're talking levels here. Couldn't get rid of him. Look, we'll see. We'll see how Chris does anyway. But look, I'm looking forward to the fight. Again, the card is um, pretty decent. Let's quickly run through it. Again, obviously, Chris Eubank Jr. versus Liam Williams, the main event. Clarissa Shields, incredible to see her on this card, by the way. She takes on Emma Cozen. Uh, Samuel Antwi versus Connor Walker. That's for an English welterweight strap. Chris Jenkins, as I mentioned, versus Julius Ndongo, obviously at welterweight. Obviously, Ndongo made his name at 140, but then once he stepped up a level, we all saw what happened. Uh, Reese Edwards versus Ruslan Bershuk. Otto Volin versus Camille Sokolowski. Harlem Eubank versus Viriel Simeon. Viriel Simeon's fought everyone. He's fought Shakur Stevenson. Uh, he's fought Scott Quigg. Zelfa Barrett. He's fought quite a lot of people, Viriel. Uh, Caroline Dubois versus, okay, they've got an opponent for her now. Vada um, Masio Katie. Never heard of her, obviously. And Steve Robinson, heavyweight, taking on uh, Shane Gill. Steve Robinson, 4 and 0. Oh. All right, um, is there any news? Okay, I it's in this one. The photo of Amanda Serrano and Katie Taylor. Let's see if there's any. Katie Taylor looking slightly taller. What a big fight for them. So weird to see Jake Paul in the photo as well, alongside Eddie Hearn. Jake Paul, it's an incredible story, but hey, incredible story. Uh, Savannah Marshall, um, she's fighting Femka Hermans on March 12th. Who's this Femka? Let's have a look. Femka, never heard of her. So name again, what have I said? Femka Hermans. Let's have a look. Never heard of her. Uh, Belgian, who's held the European female middleweight title since 2020. She previously held the WBO female super middleweight title in 2018. Uh, has also challenged for the WBA female super middleweight titles. And did she lose to Clarissa then? Who did she lose to? Yeah, I thought so. She lost to Clarissa Shields back in December 2018. Um, unbeaten in her last three, but hasn't really fought anyone, if I'm honest with you. Um... Okay. I guess, look, this is the fight that if both of them win, Clarissa and Savannah, then I guess Sky will hope to maybe put on... I don't know if it's a pay-per-view fight. I'm not, I, really, I really don't know if it is, but it's a big fight nonetheless um, between Savannah and Clarissa Shields. Um, all right, anything else? We're going to do a separate Keith Furman video. I'm actually going to do a Keith Furman video after this one. I, I did want to do um, a big video on Keith Furman. Um, look, we'll see how Keith gets on. Uh, Jamal Charlo here, cleared of robbery charges, case dismissed. Yeah. What's going on, by the way, with Dillian White? Like, strange how silent Dillian White's been since the announcement of um, this purse bid and, and the split, etc. Obviously, I'm, I'm sure that he's going through what he's still going through with the WBC uh, and that, that case with them. I think he wants more than the 80-20 split, and that's what he's fighting for maybe in this arbitration case. But it's still strange not to hear from him. Again, look, I I'm guessing knowing Dillian White, he's been told to stay stum. Like everyone's probably said, don't say anything, don't do no media, whatever it is. But it's a massive fight. They're looking to do it for April 23rd, I think it is. So it's very, very close. That's not far away. April's not far away at all. You'd like to think that considering everything that's happened, you'd like to think that Dillian can at least say, yes, ready, Tyson Fury, bring it on. You know, something, you know, but I'm guessing there's so much going on behind the scenes uh, contractually, and that's probably why he's been told to not say anything. But yeah, disappointing. I bet here about Eubank Jr. Golovkin is number one on my list. Uh, still wants Saunders rematch. I still want to know, because I still don't think it's been explained properly with Eubank Jr. What happened with that Golovkin fight? Remember, it was supposed to be Golovkin Eubank Jr., not Golovkin Kelbrook. That's what it was supposed to be. Um, and it's just annoying for me that that was Golovkin. Back then, that was Golovkin. The guy that Kelbrook, and that's why I would always respect Kel. As much as Kel's career should have been a lot better, the fact that Kel stepped up to fight that monster, and now people are calling Golovkin out, and I'm thinking, you're calling him out, he's 40. So you saying Golovkin's your number one. It, okay, look, he's got a world title, and I get it. That might be the chase, but calling out a 40-year-old, man. You know what I mean? Call out someone someone else. There's so many other people you can call out. Say I want Demetrius. I know Demetrius Andrade 
has stepped up. But say you want Demetrius Andrade, say that. Say you want Charlo, say you want, you know, guys, hungry young fighters. Yeah, I want to fight a 40 year old. When you had a chance to fight him when he was very, very much serviceable. Uh, Eubank also went on to say, I, I still want the Saunders rematch. I would like that fight. I wouldn't mind that. If Saunders can come back and, um, you know, everything is okay um, with regards to his eye and sort of what happened there, I, I would like that. I would like that a lot. Saunders ain't making 160, though. I'll tell you that now. That's not happening. Um, but I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, the WBA orders Trevor Bryan to next fight Daniel Dubois uh, by July 28th. Um, yeah, okay. Okay. Okay, um, I don't like a fight, if I'm honest with you, but all right. Uh, again, I, I would prefer to, see, I, I'd prefer to see, could Dubois beat Trevor Bryan? Possibly, possibly. I would prefer to see Dubois maybe go another route, maybe a fight before Trevor Bryan. I'd, love to, I'd like to see a veteran like Chisora take on Bryan. Uh, but look, then Dubois takes it. He puts himself in a, in a you know, he, he puts himself in a position I don't think he's ready for yet. That's what it is with Dubois. Um, obviously, for the WBA regular title, that puts him obviously clearly very, very high up in the WBA rankings. And then people will start screaming things like, you know, he'll be ready for a world title soon. He's not ready for that. He's not ready for that by any stretch of the imagination. Dubois, for me, is, is maybe floating around the top 20. And there's a lot of guys in that top 15 that I wouldn't want to see him anywhere near. I really wouldn't, but we'll see. I'd like to see Shane work with him a lot more than start to feed him to the wolves or sort of, or put him in there with the wolves. I don't think he's ready for that. So that's what I think anyway. Um, anything else before we pack up and go? Um, uh, De La Hoya, let's, we'll, we'll end on this one. Uh, De La Hoya, a, a rematch with Mayweather could easily generate five million homes or five million pay-per-view buys. Well, no, it couldn't. It couldn't. Um, but I'd like to know what Mayweather did for Logan Paul and all these fights he's been having, but look, just stop. I think this has come, obviously, off the back of Clarissa Shields saying she spent time in the Mayweather gym and Mayweather looked really good and he's, he's doing a bit of sparring. <sighs> Wasn't he supposed to have a fight with some YouTuber <laughs> in Dubai or something? Yeah, stop. Um, I don't know. Um, last bit, actually, a bit here on Furman, defending the pay-per-view price point of Barrios fight. Bubblegum ain't 25 cents no more. Fighters don't get it, do they? Fighters don't get it. Um, and I, I understand Furman saying this, that he wants to get paid. Furman hasn't come back. I don't think he's come back for world title opportunities. I think he's come back to get paid. And rightly so, it's a, you know he's had the belts already. It probably doesn't mean much to him. Um, but that pay-per-view price, I think it was $75, I think it is, for Furman... Barrios, I mean, come on. That's, you know you know how bad that is? What is that again? One second. Two sex peeps. 75 to pounds. What is that? 55 pound 21. 55 pounds 21. I'm telling you now, if Dillian White, sorry, Tyson Fury fights Dillian White and it's anything above 25 pounds, we're gonna have fucking riots over here. There'll be heart attacks. People will be screaming. That's a disgrace. 30 pounds more for Barrios Furman. Tyson Fury, number one heavyweight on the planet, lineal champion, massive fight, him versus Dylan White. It's gonna sell out an arena. Stadium, apologies. If that's above 30 quid, there's, if that's above, sorry, if that's above 25 quid, which is 30 quid less than this, there's gonna be a riot. That's how bad Furman Barrios is. And if Furman doesn't get that, then I don't know. Peace and love.